Welcome to the Miracle Prayer Channel, where we know that spiritual warfare is about preparing ourselves to go to the battlefield and seize from the enemy everything that rightfully belongs to us using the knowledge of God's Word. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So when the Apostle Paul refers to our struggle not being against flesh and blood, he's speaking not against people but against a spiritual influence operating within them a world that may be unknown to you but is real. You might wonder what to do to achieve victory through spiritual warfare. That's why through this reflection, I'll share with you five requirements that will help you gain the knowledge to be effective in spiritual warfare. The first requirement you need to know is endurance. The word of the Lord says in 2 Timothy 2.3, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. This speaks of the ability to resist and endure difficulties, adversity, or attention. We must withstand problems to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Endurance speaks of you and me remaining steadfast without wavering, trusting that victory will come. Today, I want to tell you that God is on your side. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. When you felt like giving up, He has seen your affliction. He declares through His word in Psalm 34, 5, Those who look to Him are radiant, their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, he saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. So, my dear friend, the scriptures tell us that to achieve such victories through spiritual warfare, faith is a fundamental ingredient. As the epistle of James 1.6 declares, But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind so, don't let yourself be carried away by the wind of doubt. Remain steadfast and single-minded, because in this way you will receive everything from the Lord. The second requirement is abhorrence. Psalm 139.22 says, I hate them with perfect hatred, I count them my enemies. The psalmist David was referring to us becoming enemies of every spirit or anything that rises against our lives. That's why you must rise aggressively against every depression, bankruptcy, and anything that seeks to disturb the wealth of your health. When life speaks of abhorrence in this psalm, it emphasizes a deep repulsion, antipathy, and repudiation for that which disturbs us. In spiritual warfare, we must abhor evil and evil spirits. Since Jesus said in John 14:30, I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. The one Jesus calls the ruler of this world is him, and with him is demons who have nothing to do in his kingdom. The third requirement is knowledge. This speaks of not being ignorant of the schemes of the devil. The word of the Lord tells us in 2 Corinthians 2.11, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. In the Bible, we find a biblical figure called Daniel who achieved breakthrough through spiritual warfare amidst his conflict, using fasting as one of the weapons of spiritual warfare. The word of the Lord says in Daniel 10.1, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belteshazzar. And the word was true, and it was a great conflict and he understood the word and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. It is necessary to have knowledge of the conflict you are experiencing to be effective in spiritual warfare, for just as Daniel that conflict must become the target we are going to attack. According to this account, we must have a clear understanding of what you are going through, 
whether it be divorce, drug addiction, debt, illness, hidden enemies, or anything else operating against your life that prevents you from focusing on achieving your God-given purpose. For the Lord affirms in his word in Psalm 138.8, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The fourth requirement is persistence. Psalm 18.37 says, I pursued my enemies and overtook them, and did not turn back till they were consumed. Persistence speaks of the ability to continue with determination despite oppression. We must be persistent in fighting against the enemy. The psalmist David was clear that when in war, we should not lower our arms until we defeat our enemy. David did not cease until he achieved his victories. Today, I invite you not to faint, no matter how big your enemy seems. Pursue them like the deer until you bring them down. The Bible says that God is with those who advance, not with those who retreat. God wants you to arm yourself with faith, to be aggressive, because those who are persistent, God will always deliver their victory. Look at what the Word of God declares in Job 22:28. You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you so light will shine on your ways be firm, persevere. For according to this word, God promises a great breakthrough in your difficulty. Another support to enrich or deepen, this is found in the account of 1 Samuel 17:45. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David was not intimidated by the magnitude of his problem because he knew the God he served. When you know the God you serve, you don't shrink back in front of the giant, but you challenge it and prove that it's not about how big the challenge seems, but about the greatness of the one in whom you have placed your trust. Always take the word of God when he provokes you by bringing some difficulty and wants to afflict you. Declare, as the psalmist did, in whose name you come, which is in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, also known as Jehovah Sabaoth, one of the many names of God in Hebrew. Remember, Whoever pursues and provokes you is not provoking you, but the Almighty God, and your enemy will be brought down by him. The fifth and final requirement is separation. The Bible declares in 2 Timothy 2.4, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Stay apart. No person in war gets entangled or distracted with the earthly matters of this life, as the scripture says in the book of James 4, 4. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You must be clear that when it comes to spiritual warfare, you belong to God's army. When you know that you belong to God's army and are set apart for him, you have the authority to confront and challenge your enemies, as the great prophet of God, Elijah, did. So rise up, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Do not waver in your thoughts. Be of one mind, for those who are of one mind will receive the victories of the kingdom of God. Take these five requirements that we have shared with you now to be effective in spiritual warfare. Take your place and get into position for battle and declare the word of God that you have received. You are a soldier in God's army and you have the backing of the Lord of hosts. He is your loving father who is interested in giving you nothing but the best and the greatest conquests. So now rise up and declare with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I extinguish with the shield of faith every fiery dart that the enemy throws against me and mine. 
I cast down every envy, anger, bitterness, and wrath that has been launched against my life in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind and rebuke every spirit of jealousy directed toward my life in the name of Jesus. Today I declare that the enemy will not be able to burn my harvest or my blessings. I cancel in the name of Jesus every spirit of evil sent against my life. I quench every ungodly word spoken against my life. I cancel every gossip directed against our lives in the name of Christ Jesus. I declare that I am redeemed from the curse through the blood of Jesus. As the word of the Lord says in Ephesians 1, 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Today I declare that I choose blessing instead of cursing and life instead of death. As Deuteronomy 11:26 states, see, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse in the name of Jesus. I bind and cast out every generational curse. I rebuke every spirit of death from my family. I rebuke every spirit of death from my business. I prophesy that my business rises in the name of Jesus that the unproductive becomes productive for the glory of God. I declare in the name of Jesus that I was born for victory and not for defeat, because his word says in Romans 8:37, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You are a declared victor this morning. I am a victor in Christ Jesus. Christ has already overcome for you, for your household, for your family, for your children. Rise up, take all authority in Jesus, and go for your blessing. Today I break free from every generational curse and iniquity as a result of the sins of my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I destroy all curses of witchcraft, sorcery, and divination in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I break every pride and rebellion in the name of Christ Jesus. I am liberated from every curse of death and destruction in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every curse of sickness and ailment in my body in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind and break free from every curse of poverty and debt in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I declare myself free from every curse of rejection in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Today I declare that I am free from all schizophrenia by the blood of Christ. I break every curse of divorce and separation in the name of Jesus and his mighty blood. I declare today that I am free from all mental confusion by the blood of Christ. I declare myself free from every illness that could cause accidents or premature death. I bind and break every negative word spoken against me by others in the name of Jesus. I cancel every curse that I have unleashed upon my own life through negative words. Whatever has been spoken against me in the name of Jesus, I cast it out. I rebuke every demonic manifestation in our lives in the name of Christ Jesus. We do not accept any spirit of addiction in our family. We capture it in the name of Christ Jesus and declare that our generation serves God. It is a generation of the kingdom of God. Today, Lord, we cover our home, our family with the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God, in the name of Christ Jesus. We rebuke every controlling spirit of the mind that urges me to do evil. I declare that I have the mind of Christ. I think as Christ thinks, act as Christ acts. Listen as Christ listens, see as Christ sees, as the Word of God affirms in Philippians 4.8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is poor, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This is how Christ thinks, always in a victorious manner and not a failure, because all his thoughts toward us are thoughts of good and not of evil. Through this prayer of spiritual warfare, believe for your miracle of divine healing in your life, over your children, your husband, your wife, 
over a relative, a friend, a colleague, a colleague, a classmate, and declare now in the mighty name of Jesus that every migraine, every schizophrenia, and every prostate cancer, breast cancer, every brain tumor, every issue in the spine, every problem in the central nervous system be healed, be free, be healthy in the name of Jesus. Every issue of a fallen uterus, ovarian cysts, every insomnia, every cerebral palsy, every otitis, every respiratory problem, every lung cancer, leukemia disappear from your body in the name of Jesus. Every Parkinson's disease, every astigmatism and myopia problem, receive your healing. The Holy Spirit of God glorifies Christ in your body for his glory, for his honor, and his praise. Amen and amen. Blessings. After making this prayer of spiritual warfare, give thanks to God for the victory he has already given you. Celebrate your miracle and testify so that others may increase their faith. If you enjoyed this reflection, please like and share it with your friends on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you'll be informed when we upload a new reflection. If you're going through a need and require prayer support, please leave us your comment, and together with our prayer and intercession team, we'll be placing your request in the hands of the Master. Until the next video, my brothers and sisters, may the Lord accompany you, love.